Welcome back. Today, we're going to look at something called a data struct. And a data struct is a very powerful structure in uh, C++ that allows us to uh, uh, store information um, in a concise manner. So, and the way you can think of a struct is uh, like a record in a database. So if you were to think about what we would need to store for a book in a library, we would want to store perhaps information uh, like this, the title, the author, the subject, and the book ID. So we could create, you know, several variables to do this, but wouldn't it be nice if we could roll this all up into one variable that just held all this information? Well, a struct allows us to do that. And the syntax for a struct is as follows. You use the struct keyword, and then you have a structure tag, which is the name of this struct. And then uh, you have several definitions inside of curly braces inside of this struct. Now, this does not in itself declare a variable. All it does is it defines the format for the information that will be stored in a variable. And we say that a struct is a user-defined type, and we'll see why in a little bit. So here's an example of a struct. This is the book struct, and we can see that this book struct will store information for title, author, subject, which will be strings, and an int for the book ID. You can, and you'll notice that the elements of the struct are stored are declared very much like a variable. But these are not really variable declarations. These are defining the elements of this struct called books. Now, this does not, again, declare an actual variable. It, uh, it just de defines a format for a variable. So once you've declared your struct, you can declare variables using that struct by using the name of the struct as the type of your object. So here we can see that book one is a books, book two is also books, book one has a title, an author, a subject, and a book ID, and book two also has a title, author, subject, and book ID. However, book two's title, author, subject, and book ID will be different than book one. The struct in effect is just a template for how we want to store information for, a, for these books. Another way you can declare your variables is you can, when you declare your struct, you can actually declare your variables right in the struct declaration. And this will declare the struct and then make book one and book two be two variables that are of type books. I don't generally recommend this approach. I think it makes more sense to keep them separate. But this is an option. Once you have your structs created and you created two, you know, a couple variables or some variables using that struct, you can then use the variable name and the dot operator to access the elements of a struct. And so here, for example, if we wanted to output uh, one of the title author subject of um, the book, we would just say book one dot title, book one dot author, book one dot subject. And you can kind of read this entire thing as a specification for a particular, you know, for a variable. It's, this is not the variable title. This is the variable book one dot title. So make sure you you can you look at this entire expression as as is all part of the identification of this element. So it's book one dot title, not title. And so and the way you access the members of a, a structs variable is with the dot operator. Now, where is the best place to declare your structs? Well, I recommend putting your structs in the .h file. And so here's a .h file, and you can see that the struct is declared. And then in main is where you would actually use it. So here we have you know, driver.cpp, and we can see that uh, in this, you would have um, you know, a couple, uh, some variables declared to hold some books. And you can see here where we're using the dot .operator again to, to set to assign values into each element of the struct. And so book one has a title, an author, a subject, and a book ID, and we're assigning values into the that element of the struct. And you, see, you can see book two is gonna have a different title, author, subject, and book ID. Again, you know, we reference it using the dot operator. And then when we want to output it or use it, you know, if you we, if you wanted to see out it, you would use the dot operator to get something out of it. You can also use, you know, the numbers and formulas, just like you would any variable. Just realize that the fully qualified name of that variable is the the struct, the name of the struct variable or object. Dot 
and then the element that you want to access. So let's try to write the code to define a struct that stores the following information for a student. An int for the ID, a string for the first name, and a string for the last name. So think about the, uh, the answer, pause, then think about the answer, and then hit continue. And so let's see, we want this to be a struct. So we're going to use the keyword struct. And then we want to store the information for a student. So I'm going to call this student. And then in curly braces, what we're going to put is the elements of this struct. So an int for student ID, a uh, string for first name, and a string for last name. And then don't forget the cur the, the struct requires a, a, a semicolon. So that's our struct for a student. Now let's, uh, let's declare two variables, student1 and student2, using our student struct as the type. And uh, so pause, think about the answer, and hit continue. So once we have this struct, um, and, you know, normally this would be in a .h file. So I'm going to use a different file to kind of represent, imagine that we're in driver. So once we have this um, struct, then we can say student, student1, and then student, student2. And that will declare, using the struct name student, so that's the, the identifier for the struct, and then we just declare two variables, and we name the variables whatever we want, but they're both student objects. And now we want to assign a value of 111 or 11 t11 in your um, student ID, and then uh, our, my, our own first and last name into student1. So we've got student1 here. So pause, uh, try to write down the answer, and hit continue. So we've got, you know, our students here. So we would say student1 dot, so we use that very powerful dot operator, and we can see that, you know, the, the student ID is student ID. It'll be st student1 dot student ID is equal to 1,111. And then we want to set the first name, so it'd be student1 dot, and then first name. And this basically declare, you know, will set these values into student ID, first name, and last name of student one. You know, if we want to do a second student, and we did use student two, And that would make another student. Notice that you know this this is not assigning 20, 2,222 into student ID. It's setting 2,222 into student two dot student ID. So always make sure that you're looking at the struct with the entirely uh, qualified name. And then let's say we want to display those results. Well. So pause, think about the answer, and hit continue. So if we want to display student one, we would just see out student one dot student ID, and then maybe a space student one dot first name, maybe another space, and then. Uh, student one dot last name maybe an end line
And so this is where we're using the struct. And again, we use the dot operator. So you can either have the dot operator identify an element of a struct on the left side of the assignment operator, which means you're assigning into it, or on the right side, you know, or in a C out, you know, to just to put information out. So that uh, summarizes how we use data structures. Thank you very much.